As you can see out that door, everything's white. I have some snow to plow. So now I need to plow it. I got this here gear. I'm gonna try and swap that out first. Maybe my other one on the motor. This is a 19 tooth in place of that 14 on the motor. And this is a 32 in place of the 49 on the rear. Urgh. All that to do this. And then do this. First thing I want to do, let's get that one. Let's get that. See if I can go right there. These bolts don't like to start very easily. up in between there we go <laughs> put the second pin and it's two little other pins so one last thing that I just forgot to do I haven't sir I haven't done anything with that yet so if you look I have this here cleaning kit these foam filters get oiled so you clean it with the cleaner and then you oil with the oil Plow's ready. Look at that. All right, we're in forward. Clutch brake. One.
They seem to have stretched a gear, I believe. I need a bigger chain on the back there.
right, so today I got a couple. So today I got a couple things I'm gonna work on here. Um, <clears throat> let me describe my issues first. Speedometer was only showing one mile an hour, so I recalibrated it for this. I think uh, it has a decimal point on here, and it didn't in the instructions. So I'm assuming the decimal point on here doesn't count because it was showing one mile an hour when I was going probably like 15 or more. So I removed the decimal point and ignored it when I put it in and we'll try that again. So that should be good. Um, besides that, <clears throat> next thing is this chain here. Um, it kept skipping and I'm not sure which one it was. I think it was this one, but I can't remember where it is. I'll have to find it again. Cause I moved this around, but somewhere on here, there's actually a roll, a roller missing off of one of the pins. So, um, oh, right there actually. Yep. See that one right there, how it's narrower than the rest. There's no roller on that one. So that could be making it skip up front where you only have a couple teeth engaged. Um, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. I really don't know. But, uh, so I'm going to fix that at one point. Another issue, my fender was vibrating like mad because the tire hits the inside of this with the plow on it because the suspension is fully compressed. Honestly, I didn't think I had that much suspension travel in there because those shocks only go an inch and I could not fully compress it either. But with the plow and everything on there, that extra 170 pounds and myself, and then you add the weight of the snow, it can fully compress that and that's when it hits that. So I might look at a fix for that. I might ignore it for a little bit. Not sure yet. That might not be a today thing. Things that may or may not be in this video. <laughs> Another thing I want to do is I want to mess with my gearing. Obviously here in the front, well, my top speed I'm estimating right now is somewhere around 15 or so miles an hour. I want it to be able to go faster. First gear is extremely slow still. And you can see I got play here. So I didn't want to put a thing here to tension this and see if that's the what's skipping because I want to change this gear out. So I got a much smaller one. This is a 41 tooth, I believe. And I got a 32 tooth that I'm gonna put in place of it to speed this up. I also got a 19 tooth for here, but 19 tooth will not fit. So currently there's a, I wanna say it's a 14 tooth on it. So I ordered a 16, uh, but this 19 is just too big. The chain won't clear the part of the motor there. So a 16 should be, Two teeth less, it should be a little smaller. Hopefully the chain will clear things then and I can use that. So like I said, I already changed out my back gear before that last run, um, before my first plowing actually. So here we got that new front gear. Sunster, I don't know what that is, but stickers, yay. <clears throat> so we're gonna change this out. So change this out. I need things and stuff. So here's things. And then I need some kind of stuff from over here. This was that my motor got super hot, but not like the head part, the main body of it. Uh, I th might've been my clutch. So I'm gonna have to loosen that up as well. Um, it might've been slipping. I might have already destroyed it. I'm not sure it would make, it had a not pleasant smell which I'm assuming was my clutch uh, so it may already be destroyed <clears throat> but I'll adjust it a little bit we'll try it see if it's maybe it's not completely destroyed um, either way if it is I can order a new one no big deal but maybe we can get that working next thing I need to do though is <clears throat> size this chain again obviously it needs to be considerably shorter And then we need one of these, one that'll pull apart. Oh. So, hopefully we don't need to do an adjustment, but we might.
All right, I can see we're a bit bigger. I hope we're not too much bigger. There we go. All right, now they've all got rollers. So we'll tighten this back up a little bit. And this will put some play back in the cable for the clutch. And that seems pretty good. Now, let's go in here and adjust this clutch. As you can tell, this cover's seen better days. So it kind of got really hot the last time I was running this. As you can tell. Um, so I'll end up getting a new one of these at some point. But... I may or may not have burned up my clutch in the process. We'll find out. <clears throat> I can always get a new one. All right, so let's crack this nut loose. And with this nut loose, I'm gonna loosen this up. And then we want it to just, where it just barely tightens and begins pushing on those plates. So right there. So now, let's come off just a little bit and then tighten this nut. And that should make sure that there's no play or no pressure on those uh, plates. <sighs> You know what, I'm even gonna loosen this top thing up just a little bit more too. So I went from one extreme to the other, right? First it didn't work, now it works too much. I just went too crazy with it. So um, let's get some more out of here too. So now I'm positive it will not put pressure on my clutch when my foot is not on it. And now that I'm positive of that, it should not overheat it anymore. Now it could have also been heating up like crazy because this isn't meant to pull, uh, you know, six, 700 pounds with me, the hitch and the plow, and then probably who knows, a couple hundred more pounds of snow behind that. So that being said, that could be the reason. Um, I could have too much oil in here because this had no instructions. So I looked it up online and one thing I found said um, that this should take about a quart. So when you break it down between this and that, it's about a quart and a half, which is about what I put in. But then it goes to the top of the checkered field on here. So if that's too much, it may just not be able to cool it down. So the oil doesn't smell funny, and from everything I read, the oil will stink too, because that's where your clutch is at. Obviously, it is starting to get color, but here, let's go quickly over this, just so that way if you got any tips, if you know better, please let me know. I'll fix it. So from what I read is, you put that in without tightening it down, pull it back out, that should be a reading. And then what I read was that it should go to the top of your checkered field if it's new, because that is your range. Uh, this does not say cold and hot on it. I would have thought cold and hot, you know, should be within here in the cold and within here in the hot. I don't know. Maybe not. Uh, I've never had one of these before. Usually they'll say cold or hot on them. So I don't know. This one doesn't say that. So I went by the interwebs, which is not always right, but sometimes it is. <coughs> but in other words, if that clutch had overheated, those plates might be no good anymore. And it might continue to slip and overheat until it wears out and it no longer works. Um, I can get a new one, they're like 35 bucks. Then I gotta drain the oil, take that off, take this off. Yeah, no more fun, not fun, but we'll see. 
Um, not a big deal, though. I can do that. Um, and it did leave a, a rather nasty smell. And I'm not sure if that was from this plastic or the paint or the clutch inside it coming out the vent tube. Uh, but I didn't see any smoke, so that's good. Uh, it didn't get high enough to actually make smoke, but it could be because there's so much oil, too. I don't know. And now the oil thing. This wasn't too hot when I did that either. It was warm. So I'm pretty sure it's still working. Um, but that's a lot of metal too to, for that little bit of oil to cool down, you know. Because it's dumping right back in it and mixing it. It can only cool it so much. Especially if it's continually slipping. Um, so we'll see. Hopefully now that it works and it doesn't slip. Those are my two goals to get out of that. Um, additionally, my speedometer should now work because I got it adjusted again, which to now where I think is the correct spot. Uh, I got the magnet lined up on the back, so that should work. Um, I also adjusted my chain to take the slack out. Got a new sprocket up here, uh, so this should be spinning it faster. Got a bigger sprocket for down there, so that should be spinning faster. Um, and I replaced the one link that was missing a roller so hopefully all said and done this thing's ready to rock again um but i don't know we'll see uh, i also have a 16 tooth sprocket on the way for the motor that should speed it up a little more but right now we should be able to go pretty decent and uh since last time most of my plowing i was doing it in second because first it was too slow it had the torque but it was so slow the tires would spin and you wouldn't go anywhere then at least in second you could get the tires so they could have a little bit of spin and slip uh and still be able to pull and make forward progress uh and i could still just you know kind of rev up until one of the chains was skipping or the gearbox maybe maybe it was even a gear and and that thing's messed up i don't know yet um we'll see if we can't fix it there if we can't fix it there i might throw the gopro up underneath and drive around and watch it later you know in slow-mo and see if i can figure out where that skipping is uh but right now the way everything is back one's tight front one has the most play if it skips i'm assuming it might be that front one um you could see remnants of the skippage in here because right on here you can see where this was jamming the keyway where it was jackhammering it um and you could also see that on the key itself uh, so that key might shear at some point so i'm gonna look for another 3 16 key just to have on hand if it does uh because that wouldn't be cool if i'm down for that um, and also you could see on the shaft itself where along the corner it was starting to kind of split out. So that's no good. Um, but hey, we'll see. As long as if I can fix the skipping issue, that won't be an issue. And if I can fix the skipping issue, I can give this more gas. If I can give this more gas, well crap, that's just more fun, isn't it? All right, well, see you next time. Buff it up, 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 buff it up